Good afternoon, everybody. I hope some of you at least can hear me. My name's Simon Wolf, and I'm the Global University Program Director uh, and Head of Online Learning at SOAS. Um, hopefully, um, we'll be able to have a chat over the course of the next hour. Can everyone hear me okay? Let me assign, where's the chat function? Excellent, brilliant. Well, I'm gonna run through a few slides which explain a little bit about the program and a little bit about studying at SOAS. And then we'll have the opportunity for any queries. If anything crops up while I'm talking, please feel free to use the chat function to um, utilize uh, um, I'll be happy to address any that I don't come across at the end. And we'll also have a um, Q&A session uh, towards the end of our time together. So I hope um, that's all clear. As I say, if you do have any queries, please feel free to kick off. Um, and so I will begin. So a little bit about SOAS and what makes SOAS so special. Um, I'm not going to um, repeat what's on the slides as you're no doubt able to uh, read them for yourselves, but you know my own personal experience of working at SOAS is that it is a very special place and we are um, uniquely positioned in the world to offer the academic content and um, expertise that we have um, and we'd like to be able to share that with yourselves through the online uh, programs that we offer as well, uh, as if you have the opportunity to ever come to, to London too. So we have you know, a huge number of very experienced and dedicated expert staff in academic terms. We have a wonderful um, professional services which can offer you uh, the highest level of support um, that you know, will enable you to study well. And we have you know, access to one of you know, only five national research libraries, and that's a you know, considerable asset over you know, 95% um, of the other UK um, institutions. So to the Centre for International Studies and Diplomacy, which is where I work, I am the programme director, as I say, for the Global Diplomacy Programme, the Global Diplomacy MENA, Global Diplomacy South Asia. Um, I'm also responsible uh, for my uh, pains for the Global Diplomacy MOOC and the Understanding Research Methods MOOC. Others of my colleagues whose um, faces you can see on the CISD website are responsible for the Global Energy and Climate Policy Programme. That's uh, Dr. Harold Halbum, and Muslim Minorities in the Global Context, uh, Dr. Sarah Stewart, and the MSc Global Corporation and Policy, uh, Dr. Suda Nadaraja and Pallavi Roy. Um, and correspondingly, the UN MOOC is run by my colleague, the director, Dr. Dan Plesch, and the Global Energy and Climate Policy MOOC by, again, Dr. Harold Halbum. So really, I want to sort of jump to the end and explain the um, quality of the programme that we have here um, and some of the things that you can expect. So the online programmes at SOAS in CISD uh, have been running since April 2013 and uh, we've had over 450 students to date. Now that means that we don't have too many, we don't have too few, like the old story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, we believe we've got it just right. So it means the classes are manageable, um, both from the student perspective and from our own perspective. Um, but what it also means is that we are able to dedicate ourselves to your education and well-being. So from that 455% uh, or 450 students of various intakes, you had over 200 graduates thus far. Uh, and importantly, over 85% of our students complete the masters within two years. And that's a function of the way the programme works, the support services we can offer to you, and the way that um, the academic uh, content is structured. So also you know, it's, it's important to note that because of the you know, innovation and the excellence in the pedagogy we provide, that is the sort of theory of learning, um, you know, our students do very well. So 38% of our students 
end up with a master's distinction. So that means their average grade is over 70% throughout. And that means that we're able to, again, offer a very high quality product to everyone who's out there um, on the course. And, you know, that's acknowledged by the students. So, you know, 95% of the students rate the program as excellent or very good. And we look like that is, um, you know, worthwhile. Um, and, you know, it's something that our students say as being, you know, very it's also worth pointing out, and many of you may have come to this um, with a you know, campus-based learning experience, that the, there is a 5 to 8% increase in student performance over their campus-based counterparts. So the value of having uh, an online learning experience is not in any way sort of second-class um, qualification or second-class learning experience. In fact, in many regards, it's you know, at the forefront of uh, educational um, provision. So we have a huge variety of different modules for your um, delectation uh, over the course of um, the, your study period. Depending upon which degree path you take, it will depend upon the number of core modules you're able to undertake. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But essentially the principles for our provision apply from you know, whether you're 15 students or 80,000. We've had in fact over 150,000 students across the MOOCs now. So you know, the pedagogy that underpins this is you know, absolutely sound and has been regarded as being best practice and being uh, joined by a number of uh, different uh, institutions. And again, that's borne out by the remarks of the external examiner, which I joined, you know, shared with you uh, at the bottom of this slide that we're looking at now. You know, it's a consistently high level of academic engagement and intellectual challenge. And, you know, with my educational philosophy, how well, that's, you know, the very least I could ask for. So in terms of the structure, each of the uh, MA uh, programmes, and I've just used the Global Diplomacy exam uh, as an example, has four 30 credit modules. And we are able to um, begin with the core module, the art of negotiation. And then equally, you have a 60 credit uh, dissertation module, and that adds up to 180 credits. And that is what you need to, to get your master's degree. So there are two 16 week study sessions, um, followed by eight week dissertation, the mini dissertation modules. And the start dates are in October and April each year. And you'll see the application deadlines there. The fee level for 2017-18 is £10,000 or £2,000, £2,500 per 30 credit module. So you can pay an instalment effectively, which I know a lot of our students find very helpful. So in terms of how it works, well, you have access to you know, the world-class library here at SOAS and also the University of London's library. So in that, that's uh, you know, very much to your benefit. We have a very um, clear and structured study schedule, which will allow, or, you know, which will give you the opportunity to work flexibly around uh, your provision. All of the uh, module guides are provided uh, in the online format, and all of them are produced by, you know, full-time members of academic staff. Um, each of your modules is assessed through a series of activities, and that's just a way of describing an online assessment. And importantly, each of these have dedicated bespoke feedback because this is the quality that really you know, marks the program out, is the quality of the feedback that effectively works as feed forward as a learning tool on your behalf. All of the materials are say, supplied through um, the online format, and that includes you know, the most up-to-date uh, message uh, content that you may need. And importantly, you're supported throughout this whole endeavor by you know, a dedicated associate tutor for each of your subject modules, a personal tutor to look after your uh, academic well-being, myself as programme director and other colleagues, and also by a dedicated administrator as part of a wider administration team. So in that sense, all of us are you know, dedicated to your academic uh, well-being. And if there's anything at any point that interferes with your ability to undertake the course, then that is something that we can uh, address. And indeed, we have a good deal of experience um, in dealing with students who find themselves in difficult circumstances, be that in a um, you know, sort of physical situation, people who've had to be evacuated from uh, different uh, corners of the world due to natural disaster or um, conflict, 
or to the sad sort of personal circumstances that befall you know all of us in terms of um, you know bereavement and uh, illness occasionally. So you know there's no reason why we can't um, assist in that kind of uh, suggesting. Rather than um, carry on in that regard, I just wanted to share, you know, a series of sort of reflections on the programme from other people, um, you know, who are perhaps, you know, very well placed as key stakeholders in the process to, you know, illustrate what the programme's done uh, for its students. So, again, I refer to the comments of our external examiner, um, and he, in this instance, you know, argues that the work that we he sees and that's the work that students have done is on a par with any of the institutions uh, in the United Kingdom and indeed uh, more broadly. And indeed from one of our associate tutors talking here about how the students have, you know, that he's encountered have been amongst the best uh, that he's taught. And I think that is, um, you know, testament to the fact, you know, that the quality of the people we get on the course is really very impressive. And it was one of the reasons why you know, I'm very keen to talk uh, at, to you as prospective students, but also, you know, why is it where I get up in the morning and come in to work and talk to uh, our students online? Perhaps I'll leave you with this um, reflection from one of our students, a graduate in uh, from October 2015. I think there are a couple of things to point out on that, but I'll just leave that for you to read for a moment. What's, um, you know, I feel slightly sort of warm inside about this quote is that the student found, you know, the learning experience good at the first instance. That's obviously the most important function of what we do. But also that they were, we were able to support them in their learning through being responsive um, to an individual student, but also creating that sort of positive uh, environment for them. Equally, that they recognise the quality of the programme as being comparable with their you know, a, a campus-based experience, which, you know, if it, for good reason and some um, online provision is not um, to that uh, quality, but, you know, it's recognised here that it is. And equally that, you know, this student who hadn't studied for a while was, you know, reassured by the support levels we were able to give to them. And, you know, perhaps most uh, importantly from my position as an educator, that they were inspired to continue learning. And that is, um, you, know, you know, it does make me feel um, warm inside, as I say. So in terms of uh, applications, we would, um, you know, the deadlines upcoming for uh, the October session. And again, we have a session in April with a March uh, deadline for applications. And the application process, um, you know, very straightforward, submitted online through the uh, departmental website. Um, and, you know, we turn around our applications very quickly so we can give you a sense of what um, your position is and enable you to get started um, with your uh, studies. So that's been a quick sort of um, pre of the program, studying at SOAS and studying online. Um, so if you have any questions or queries, I'd be more than happy to address them um, and if there's anything else or any thoughts to come to you um, please feel fine to be um, you know to come back to me okay so I've got a question here from uh, what Jiha uh, around picking up a module or two individually okay so I'll just uh, type my response. Oops, lost my connection again. Modules are only available as part of the 
program. So if you're interested in doing a couple of modules, we could probably um, register you on the certificate in South Asia, uh, Global Diplomacy South Asia, at which point you'd be able to do have access to those elective modules um, on the program. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you can hear me. Um, so I don't know whether we will be able to, I'm sure we can um, register you as a uh, um, on the program. Timo, thank you for your question. Um, the first payment would have to be made um, by the uh, is it the fifth, uh, the end of the month, end of September. Although there's possibly a little bit of leeway. I remind myself um, what day of the week the 30th is. So yeah, if it tripped into the first week, you know, in terms of you know, getting paid at the end of a month. If it tripped into the 5th of October would be a suitable deadline for the start on the uh, later in the month in October. I hope that helps. Not. Uh, thank you, Aida, for your question. Um, do you not have Aida, you'd still need to um, look uh, at doing an IELTS or TOEFL to uh, ensure your English uh, uh, level of English for the um, program ahead. Um, they're relatively straightforward, even um, encountering you know various bureaucracies around the world. Undertaking a TOEFL is not too uh, difficult, I hope, um, and I'm, well, you know, you're, you'd be able to do that um, wherever it is you may be. Hello, Chris. Nice to speak to you. Um, in answer to Chris's question about a single textbook, this is rather um, uh, <laughs> a sort of, um, I have a vested interest here because I wrote a textbook called uh, Global Diplomacy, Theories, Types and Models, which, you know, now will be the perfect opportunity to plug. However, you know, sort of intellectually and philosophically, we don't rely on a single textbook because we don't want to just provide one uh, perspective. Um, you know, being at SOAS, we want to give you a truly global perspective and not one, you know, that's a function of, you know, my uh, intellectual experience, which has been, you know, largely Western, um, etc. Um, Claire. Hello. Um, would you consider Twitter? Yes, yeah, certainly. We uh, formal academic qualifications are not an absolute requirement. We'll take every individual application on merit. So, if you'd like to, um, you know, point to the experience that you've garnered in your professional service, that would be um, excellent. Um, you know, we have a number. I'd probably say maybe fifteen. 20% of our student body have not had formal higher education qualifications, um, either through sort of circumstance, you know, displaced people, refugees, or through um, professional circumstances, maybe uh, having joined a, a military uh, environment in, as a younger person, um, or indeed, you know, just that's the way that life has worked out. Um, so yeah, that's perfectly, um, relevant it's good in you know if you're in that situation in your application to point out how your um op you know, your professional experience has uh engendered your interest in the subject and how you think it will be relevant i hope that helps claire uh suzanne um format of essays well the detail of that is all provided within the virtual learning environment so in terms of uh, referencing, length, the support that you get, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, in technical terms, I suppose it's a uh, you know uh, four to four and a half thousand to five thousand words piece. It accounts for seventy percent of a module mark, so it's a significant piece. But that fits the discipline that we're working in, which is one where the written word is still predominant. Um, 
but we do within the assessment structure on the rest of the module give you the opportunity uh, to um, talk around other forms of assessment because we recognize that in a not many professional environments do you get the opportunity to write a four and a half five thousand word um, piece of work um, so I hope that helps um, Claire Claire, more than happy to have a discussion about your application. Um, that's not a problem. Feel free to be in touch. Aida, a second question. Um, European accession, okay. Um, and your anti question for Oriental Asian. Considering the title of the school and your specialised masters, do you think my interest would not be met in a high quality? Um, well, I think what we try to do and what CISD does which is distinct from SOAS as a whole, is CISD talks to the global. It is the global part of SOAS. So whilst my colleagues in, you know, for example, the Asia Institute or the China Institute have a very specific geographic focus, colleagues like myself in CISD have a global perspective. So our tagline is thinking globally and acting globally. And that really fits well with the global diplomacy program and indeed the global diplomacy book that I wrote. So we are very interested in you know, questions of Europe and particularly um, how Europe in its current um, you know, machinations and particularly from a UK perspective in that regard, how is Europe responding to you know, issues and uh, challenges from uh, China, from other parts of the world? I mean, the, in that sense, you know, and I, I'm you know, suitably well placed having spent a good deal of my time in the Euro-Atlantic world you know, looking at my own research on transatlantic relations um, as, a, as a sort of complement to my global perspective. And that's really what's driven me from having had an academic background in you know, bilateral Anglo-American relations to end up in an institution like SOAS. So I think if you were to consider the global diplomacy programme, I think your uh, aspirations would be met. And equally, anyone can shape their master's experience with the support we give to you to determine and write your dissertation on the subject that you would like to. So that's very much part of your sort of independent learning that we would want to encourage at the master's level. I hope that helps, Aida. Um, Timo, how is the credit structure passing of a single module built up? Um, well, each credit, each that module is made up of 30 credits and your module is accounted for with 70% as your final submission after 16 weeks is your four to five thousand four and a half to five thousand word essay the other 30 percent of your module marks are made up by what we call um etivities as a um and in that sense we have a, a given um uh, these are Etivities one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six is the essay. Etivity one is a formative exercise, and that means it's purely uh, it's assessed. You don't receive any formal uh, summative feedback. Uh, sorry, summative assessment. You do receive feedback. Etivities two, three, and five are both all worth five percent of your overall module mark, and etivity four is worth fifteen percent. Collectively, they make a mark out of thirty that's added to your marker uh, for your essay and that's how you end up with as it were 100 percent of marks for your essay uh, sorry for the single module um and in terms of your second question there timo yes you can you can pay two and a half thousand pounds every six months thank you Ida. no problem um suzanne more than happy to draw yeah, send me an email. You've got my email address on the screen here. Uh, Mary, um, student numbers. Well, you know, we, as I said, um, I mean, just sort of drawing on the uh, the Goldilocks <laughs> analogy. Um, we believe we have a sort of just the right number. Um, each student cohort, in terms of a module, is capped at fifteen um, students. So you are um, only ever in a class, effectively, of up to fifteen students very uh I mean, sometimes it'll be less than that maybe 10 12 um, but you'll never be in a class of more than 15 students we may we probably take about 30 students each six months 
So we are suitably selective um, to, you know, in terms of what uh, students come onto the, the program. We don't want students who aren't in a position to do themselves justice. So either that's through their, you know, uh, aptitude or personal circumstances. So we keep it um, sort of manageable and ensure that we create a sort of community of learners. So we're very much we're very keen that you would draw and have a sort of intellectual relationship with the students in your class. So I hope that helps. Uh, Timo, no problem. Likewise, Susan. Selim, uh, oh, we've got a conditional offer. Um, Selin, uh, if you have your transcript and your degree certificate is in English, and uh, then that's uh, fine. Do send those along. That will be uh, satisfactory. Um, certainly mail it along with the other documents and do send them um, recorded or couriered so that we don't lose them. I wouldn't want you to lose them uh, courtesy of the uh, British mail system. Um, in terms of participating on campus, there's a whole series of uh, events um, that you're um, uh, entitled to come into the building here in London um, each and every week, um, be they just for CISD or indeed more broadly across the campus. In terms of whole courses, we're not in a position to offer that to our online students as yet, largely because uh, the um, estate isn't uh, um, well suited to that. And so we're not able to offer um, uh, sort of a residential experience in that regard as yet. It is something we're working on um, and you know if you happen to be uh, or anyone in London for time then that's certainly equally if you were here for a week and just wanted to sort of sit in on a class then that would be fine also. Um, Chris, the online program is similar in structure to the CERS MOOCs to Coursera. Um, broadly, the Coursera platform offers um, uh, a different uh, experience um, than the SOAS one. Um, you know, they're, they're different um, levels of activity, different levels of um, educational experience. But, you know, the, some of the content um, is relevant, so it's certainly um, worthwhile doing. And, you know, I recommend if you're considering doing um, one of our MA, MSc programmes, then having a look at the MOOCs is certainly a good way to get started. Um, happy to help, Mary. Timo, um, the availability certainly um, is there for global energy and climate policy. I would certainly recommend applying in that regard. Uh, and sell in. Okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you were just here in, in sort of passing or um, you know through travel or work, then you know by all means, you know we always were happy to see our online students, you know, in person. Um, that's no problem at all. Nicholas, uh, thank you. Okay. Um, in terms of a time commitment weekly, the um, we work on the basis of between 10 to 12 hours a week over the course of the 16 weeks, and then between six and eight hours over the course of the eight week dissertation sort of mini module. Why is the award an MA and not an MSc? Um, it's a good question, which reflects a lot about uh, British and indeed universal global uh, um, higher education. It's a Masters of Arts because the subject diplomacy broadly is considered within arts and humanities, possibly verging into the social sciences. The more scientific, quantitative a degree is, the more likely it is to be an MSc. Who do we consider as our competitors? Um, the competitors, well, my alma mater um, at the University of Leicester um, were competitors of sorts, uh, colleagues at the University of Staffordshire who do a program, colleagues at the University of Lancaster. Um, I'll swipe that one, Timo. Um, so I think the co um, that's probably who we regard as our competitors, Kings to a degree, LSE. That said, I, you know, I uh, should probably blow my trumpet a little bit more to say that we are 
you know, the global diplomacy program is unique and that, you know, CISD is the biggest single provider of um, diplomacy education in the world now. So the program between the campus program and the online program is bigger than Tufts, bigger than um, Columbia, um, bigger than other sort of global providers and certainly bigger than um, providers in, in the UK. Um, who do we say so? Uh, certainly we'll have an FCO enrollment um, in this course. Um, speaking to colleagues at the Foreign Office yesterday. Um, so yep, we'll have uh, you know, Foreign Office environment, uh, involvement and that's just to say that students from you know the UK's Foreign and Commonwealth Office have you know uh, we have an arrangement with their learning and uh, well-being teaching uh, component of the Diplomatic Academy and their students uh, come onto the program uh, alongside other students and we look good to that. In terms of library access we have full library access on for on um, you know, everything you get hold of uh, in the building here we can get hold of online so you have full access to the library. There may be one or two things uh, in the broader context that are sufficiently either delicate that have not been uh, provided in an online environment, but we have ways and means to get them online um, if we find ourselves in that circumstance. So you're as well served in terms of library access um, as an online student as you are in terms of getting in the building. Um, Chris, just coming back on that, yeah, so during the course of the dissertation phases, so after each of the modules, you have a dissertation phase, so the overall dissertation module is broken up into um, four phases, four parts, and, you know, it's a lesser commitment in terms of those, uh, uh, you know, in, um, in terms of those mini modules, but nevertheless, it is a commitment, um, and it's very much in your interest to participate in the dissertation modules, um, as well. So I hope that helps. Okay. How are we doing for time? Um, have you got any other questions? Anything else I can help with? Any thoughts about? We also have, I should probably mention, the opportunity to. Um, participate in a Geneva and New York Washington study tour. So um, students um, will be given the opportunity and for uh, an additional fee, we'll be able to join the students who we take to Geneva in February and then to um, uh, New York in April and May. We take you to the United Nations, we take you to in various institutions, we have to be slightly careful about who, um, largely because of availability and you know, uh, people's uh, commitments. But you know, if that was of interest, or indeed if you were in the vicinity, then students we know have come from as far far afield as um, South Africa and New Zealand to join those study tours. Um, full details of which can come uh, further down the line. Um, Chris. Yep, two years is the, is the standard program. Um, and, you know, as I say, 85% of our students complete it within two years. So, you know, that's, you know, uh, very much to their credit, but also a function of having a program which allows students a degree of flexibility, but keep them on track. Uh, the trips to New York and Geneva are a week long each. So we spend a week in Geneva, um, approximately around middle of 15th to 20th uh, in Geneva and then the April May trip is um, end of April beginning of May um, sort of time um, and as I say we go to a number of institutions provide a number of sort of speaking engagements opportunities for you to interact with you know high level um, officials from the likes of the World Bank the IMF um, etc etc In terms of a, a student profile, just if that might be helpful, we I would suggest probably 
Um, so I'll just come back to Timo's question on New York and Geneva. Um, travel arrangements. So the trips will be made, you know, it's your responsibility to arrive in Geneva or um, New York. So we don't um, build that in. But if you are you know, able to get to those places, then we'll provide all of the internal travel, all of the internal um, support that you need and the accommodation that, that's built into that um, uh, trip. Just to return to the sort of student profile, our students are spread everywhere um, geographically, and that's really impressive. Um, it, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to talk to people around the world as I'm doing now, uh, but able to you know learn from each other is a you know, very rewarding exercise. Um, coming back to Chris's point, um, familiarisation. We don't. Uh, the, the classroom online is made available at oh, you know at the start date, and that's quite deliberate. What we want to achieve is that everyone has the opportunity to familiarise themselves at the same point because it reinforces the idea of a community of learners. So equally, there's no um, you know, sort of gremlins or secrets to be had in familiarising yourself earlier. So everything starts on day one um, with your, you know, when the modules are uh, the online classroom becomes available. They often be re referred to as the VLE, the virtual learning environment. And uh, sometimes by its sort of um, provider, which is uh, Moodle, which is just a, a sort of brand name, if you like, for the platform. Absolutely, Claire. We'll be recording this and um, subject to editing out all of my uh, uncomfortable pauses. Um, we'll get it to you um, later on, um, perhaps towards the end of the week or the beginning of next week. You'll get a version of this along with uh, details of the application process. Elaine, uh, OK, happy to be of service. Um, Nicholas, not usually. Um, the classes are asynchronous, and by that you mean that there's not a, um, a uh, an entirely um, synchronized learning experience. So the value of the recording is would be negligible. So we don't do that. Um, Chris, uh, hmm. Within the realm of um, sort of intellectual uh, argument here, um, my perspective, my understanding of the world is that there is a difference between global diplomacy and international relations. That said, I, I own a, a master's degree myself in international relations, um, but I have written on global diplomacy. Um, I'd hope to uh, address the fact that they are different um, throughout the course. Glad, Suzanne. Um, Nicholas, oh, the time zone e equation, you know, really take out of the game. Virtue of um, making things asynchronous. So we provide people with a window of opportunity to undertake a particular piece of learning and achieve a learning outcome, not a specific time. Um, okay, Chris, pleasure. Uh, so then, can we choose the climate twist? You can choose certainly some of them. So the Global Diplomacy Program, in its uh, sort of uh, most broad sense, you can certainly undertake the Global Energy and Climate Policy um, module. So yeah, the registering on the Global Diplomacy Program gives you access to the most specific um, 
point of um, access to uh, all of the different modules. Some of the other more bespoke modules, so the Global Diplomacy, for example, MENA program requires you to undertake not only the core Global Diplomacy module art and negotiation, but the core uh, module for uh, MENA, which is Economics, Politics, Society, MENA. So undertaking that module is part of that program. And equally within that pathway, you need to undertake one of your elective modules needs to be from that MENA selection. That works the same for South Asia and to a degree to Muslim minorities. Um, Claire, yep, yeah, that's as though we, uh, you know, we think of these things, <laughs> um, not least the colleagues in the Middle East, but also to make sure that you have um, the opportunity to, you know, take your time. One of the great functions of this program, speaking to students who've been on it and students who um, didn't, or, you know, have uh, the opportunity at their, you know, the level which, you know, you are at is the opportunity to reflect an opportunity to take your time to think about some of these things rather than you know because your boss needs it in an hour um, which is what mine does <laughs> um, but you know is that kind of experience to make sure that students have the opportunity to reflect and think about things and not just sort of that knee-jerk uh, reaction again more than happy to help Okay. Uh, Celine, certainly. Um, you know, I've written numerous PhD references in recent times from our graduates, and a good number of our graduates do go on to do PhD study. Um, again, this is my opportunity to uh, cravenly plug the uh, global studies. PhD program within which is offered by CISD at SOAS, but as you'll appreciate, other PhD programs are available. Um, and yeah, you know, certainly the master's degree you receive here is as valid as any other. No problem at all. So, Ida. Um, well, in terms of the uh, distinction with development studies in academic terms, they're very they're distinct um, disciplines, academic fields. Um, so they are not the same thing. They share a number of similarities, it's fair to say, um, in terms of there being, um, uh, you know, broadly within the field of arts or social sciences more appropriately. So there is a, a relationship uh, and certainly some of the circumstances in which, you know, those working in development studies need to practice diplomacy, and those working in development studies deal with de development studies issues. I mean, that's certainly um, the case. Um, Nicholas, no, the award, the wording on your degree certificate is precisely the same as if you'd attended um, the campus here in London. So there's no difference in that regard. Um, so your, uh, you know, it makes no reference to it being an online degree. Um, it's just you know, University of London SOAS degree. Timo, thank you for your time. Any more for any more? Any questions I can ask about, answer indeed about tutor support or administration support, um, finance, um, I don't know, it's up to you.
No problem, Claire. Look forward to speaking to you. And indeed, anyone else who wants to be in touch, please feel free. Great. I'm glad it's useful. But equally, if there is anything more, and if you're anything like me, you'll probably come to the end of this conversation and then realize um, there's something I meant to ask. So again, just feel free to drop me an email and I'll be happy to be back in touch. Look forward to it, Ida. We still have a few more moments if there's anything we can address now. Um, but if not, we can, uh, as it were, call it quits and we'll be happy to be in touch directly. I know the feeling, Claire. We do have a little more time, Ida. I've got another 15 minutes or so before uh, the session ends here. So yeah, by all means, ask another question. the requirements, okay? Okay. Sounds good. See, connecting already. Okay. Appreciate the point, Ida. I'm not too concerned about that in many regards. Many people who come onto the program have come to the study of diplomacy, you know, without a, a first degree in, uh, you know, anything to do with diplomacy. So, uh, you know, the fact that your uh, master's degree was in literature and art history is not um, uh, troubling to me. What it shows is that you've got a commitment to study and an ability to complete. So. You know, the, the topic is slightly different, or indeed very different, um, is not a huge challenge or concern to me. Okay. Again, happy to help. No problem, Chris. Now, it's one of the problems of synchronicity, um, Ida, is making sure that we can keep track of these conversations. The software is pretty good, but it does make that.
Okay. So, sort of final call. Anything else I can help any of you with? Or any questions you might have? As I say, glad to be of service and glad it was useful to you all. If you have any further queries, feel free to be in touch with myself or my colleagues, and um, we look forward to your application. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.